Hi, my name is Sausan Gad. I'm representing 23 members of Egypt Parallel Constitution Task Force, uh, both in Egypt and the diaspora. We are not representing any majority. In fact, we're the most, the smallest minority probably ever existed. We are, think of us like as a constellation of minorities. Uh, I'm going to speak to you today about constitution making, um, a moment in, in nations that is highly um, identified by the presence of too many negotiators and uh, a confused audi audience and inherent lack of experience. If you look here, some statistics says uh, only half of constitutions live more than 19 years and we're not even controlling for fragility or development condition. Some tools have been developed to correct that, like Google Co Constitute, where you can um, uh, see some options by browse by countries or topics. But this develops the problem of the political act, the, the, I call it the shopping uh, cart syndrome, where the political activist has so many good things that they want to put in the Constitution, and then the, dr the drafters uh, uh, dump everything to please everybody and under the pressure to end the conflict. Um, and then you expect voters to make informed decisions by having like a 200, 300 article constitution when they're um, most of the time highly, highly illiterate and voting on what you tell them about a constitution, not what's about in the constitution. Uh, to give you a quick his uh, history on the role of ICT in Egypt, it has been used in from 2000 to 2005 to break the gag on uh, political activism. Um, 2000, 2006, it helped people mobilize, but now it's time to make informed decisions and understand the cost of decision making. That's why, uh, if, in terms of constitution making, why do we need a new tool? Because you have an inflation of information and options, and you need to understand how to negotiate better your options, uh, as well as communicate effectively with the audience so that you can tell them uh, what better to negotiate. We're developing a model, basically we're trying to draw the constitution, where we can develop uh, the model that shows the, you know, the heat, the power locus, where is the power locus in the constitution, and what is the, uh, where is the citizen money going? Uh, for example, here you can see if, if they're look looking for decentralization, they can see if their money is indeed going to the central government or local government. In terms of low hierarchy, it helps you troubleshoot if you have, uh, if your, your, your rule of law is not working, it helps you troubleshoot the tree of law so that you understand what is the law that giving you a problem. Uh, Egypt constitution, uh, parallel constitution methodology, we call it the null hypothesis method, which is basically to assume there is no government at all and then start from there, redesign the government as opposed to reform it. The international community um, has been developing so many, you know, constitutions to fix, fix that things that have gone wrong um, in our nation states, but maybe it's time to re to completely overhaul this process. Basically, develop, um, uh, draw the model, um, uh, show the relationships between the citizens, different levels of government, and then show, for example, if you want to change, change some rights, I want, the, I want this model to tell me that I cannot change this uh, number of rights, and I want the model to tell me that there is a circular reference, like the Mo Microsoft Excel does, that, 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 that you cannot put the, you know, like a circular reference in the Constitution, a problem that often happens. Um, in our experience, by using this null hypothesis model, we have been able to redesign the state redesign certain concepts that go into, redesign the state as, a, for example, uh, now decentralization flows more naturally. And uh, we ended, uh, we were able to end the state control over the provision of rights by having, by identifying the rights that the government cannot uh, interfere in. Uh, by redesigning concepts like public order, national security, uh, sovereignty, big words that don't mean anything unless you really give them meaning. Um, additional benefits of technology that helped us, it emphasized the outliers. Basically, anyone that is, a, that is not a Muslim, fair-skinned male is an outlier. So in fact, they're, just, they're not a minority, they're just misrepresented. But it's not always that pretty. We, you have to secure government ownership to create this model. And probably it, in a conflict situation, they will be um, 
forced to do that as opposed to willing? How do you control the situation? Thomas Schelling has a very interesting uh, approach to this in the strategy of conflict by saying if you're, if you're stuck in, in a situation of conflict, conflict like that, maybe it's time to make a very crazy move that your opponent does not expect and that's how you compel them so much into working with you. So maybe that's a, an interesting approach that the government can help, can, can do. Once, you're, once you develop a, a, a model that everybody is uh, pleased with and uh, proud of, maybe you can, build, you can show how it's, it looks like an atomium and probably building into, build it into a site that people can go visit. Thank you very much.